Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off with Intel, specifically the fact that Raja Kadori has shared with us an image of their XE GPU. This is actually the XE HPC GPU. And according to Raja, it's ready for power on seven advanced silicon technologies in a single package. A silicon engineer's dream, he says, a thing of beauty. And I have to say that it does look rather pretty. Raja has not actually annotated this particular image. We'll get to that in just a moment. But you can definitely see it is a two tile design. Based upon what we've previously learned about Intel XE, we can pretty much therefore guess that we are looking at 1,024 execution units, which should put this as a grand total of 8,192 cores. There was actually an image which Intel shared at the architecture day, and here we can indeed see what the performance targets are thus far, although of course it will depend upon final clock frequencies of the GPU, and furthermore we can see the scaling. So with one tile, two tile and four tile designs, which Intel are apparently working on, you can see that the scaling between each of these is basically linear. With the four tile design, which we can probably guess is going to be really, you know, power hungry, four or five hundred watts, something around there, that has 2048 execution units. So each of these tiles therefore contains 512 execution units. Again, this is based upon previous leaks that we've seen from drivers and so on. And Raja also makes a point in stating that there are several different uh, pieces of technology which have come together here. We'll look at actually what is inside of it in just a moment. But yeah, you can see from this products packaging and process overview slide, again from Architecture Day 2020, that there is the base tile, compute tile, Rambo cache, which I think is brilliantly named, XE Link IO tile, and all of this comes together on the Fovros Co EMIB. So for example, the base tile is Intel's 10nm Superfin process used, whereas the Rambo cache tile is using Intel's 10nm enhanced Superfin design. WCCF Tech have also done a pretty good breakdown as to what we believe is inside each of these uh, dies. And again, there are two of these uh, tiles which come together. So um, yeah, you can see that there are several HBM2 uh, sets of memory dotted around the package and in the center of them are of course the compute dies so we are actually looking at eight compute dies per tile so again there are two tiles here this is combined with various other pieces of technology such as the io tile unfortunately we don't have exactly concrete benchmarks yet from intel again we saw the scaling uh, performance just a moment ago but at the end of the day these are not you know kind of wider benchmarks from a larger ecosystem and also this particular gpu is not designed for gaming necessarily this is kind of for the data center i do believe that intel are working on the gaming side of the equation and i think that honestly the market needs the gaming gpus a lot um because i, I I personally think that the market right now would be in a very different place if Intel did have at least a reasonable GPU on the market. Let's say even if it wasn't the super high end, let's say even if it was kind of catering to people who want like RTX 3060, RTX 3070 levels of performance, that would still be brilliant in my opinion. Um, it would be better able to serve the total available market. But yeah, yesterday we also covered the fact that Intel were kind of releasing its first discrete GPU, although this is not based upon the same architecture. This is H, um, this is XELP. So this is an entry level GPU, and we are looking at considerably fewer number of execution units. And fortunately, the bad news doesn't end there. It was actually uh, kind of found out thanks to legit reviews who Intel have provided a quote to that you actually need a special UFE BIOS. And basically this is only going to be available for OEMs. So this is going to be for pre-built systems and you will need like, for example, a ninth generation CPU to be able to utilize one of these. I'm not 100% cut up about it because again, this GPU is not for high performance gaming. This is not a GPU 
which is going to be used to play, say, Doom Eternal at high frame rates of 4K. Even so, there is a reason that cards such as NVIDIA's GT 1010 exist, and that is because, of course, there is a demand for low-performance graphics in the market for, let's say, basic kind of office work, that type of thing. All we can do is hope that Intel get their XE GPUs out as fast as possible for gaming, and I think as well it will just be interesting to see how the market responds to all of this. And while I am on the subject of Intel, I'd like to talk about the specifications. And this, by the way, is courtesy of videocards.com, and they are doing something naughty. They are actually leaking the final specifications of Intel's Rocket Lake S. IMHO, and bear in mind I have not tested these GPUs, so do take what I'm about to say with some levels of salt. The 11700K does seem to be the best CPU in terms of what it's offering in terms of specifications. I do suspect that you will be able to overclock the 11900K higher, but again, I haven't played around with one of these CPUs yet to know. However, the major difference we can see here is that it does seem to have a thermal velocity boost on the 11900K, but both the 900 and 700 are 8 cores, 16 threads. And yeah, they are also 125 watts. You can also see that the 11600K here is 6 cores, 12 threads. So... Yeah, my, my guess is, and this is also based upon leaked pricing that we've seen previously, that the 11600K is actually not too bad in pricing. So I'm guessing for most people, you will see them buy either the 11600K or the 11700K. And I suspect that both will be pretty decent upgrades if you've got, let's say, a Z490 motherboard right now, and you want a drop-in upgrade. Continuing on, let's talk about the Switch Pro, shall we? Or, no, wait. Is that a bird? Is it a plane? No, it is Super Switch. Do, 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 do. I better stop before I get the MCA'd. Anyway, yeah, so Super Switch apparently is the rumor that is now circulating on the internets. And this is actually from a Brazilian journalist. And, well, they have been right previously. And apparently... Yeah, it's not going to be called the Switch Pro. Instead, it's going to be called the Super Switch. This is not a terrible name. I mean, Super Nintendo and so on and so on. And there was a period through the 90s where just about everything was Super. Let's just be honest. But to be fair, this is not actually the first time we've heard this name. In fact, back in October, a chap by the name of Tyler McVicker also said that we're going to be seeing it called the Super Switch, and we also learned about a plethora of games which apparently will be uh, coming out for Nintendo's hardware. I'm going to be quite interested to see what they do with this hardware at the end of the day. Uh, we still have no concrete specifications. Uh, last year I did put out an exclusive that uh, Nintendo were definitely testing several variants of hardware for a possible Switch replacement. I'll link that in the video description or at the very least some type of new revision of the switch and it seemed to me based upon what i was being told at the time that yeah it wasn't really a sequel to the switch it was kind of just upgraded hardware um and you can definitely make some assumptions about the hardware for one that it would be designed around the prospect of higher resolution and indeed that seems to be the case we're hearing rumors that it's going to be 4k capable of which is what i leaked back then and i suspect that we're going to be using some type of tensor core most likely on one of one of nvidia's later architectures to be able to upsample that and then the final piece of news for today i'd like to discuss xbox series x specifically the fact that stock will continue to suck until at least april this has been confirmed by CFO Amy Hood, and she told investors that there would be, quote, significant demand for consoles, and yes, we can agree with that, but supply will be, quote, constrained until at least the end of this quarter, which of course means that April onwards may be a different story. But if you want to pick up an Xbox Series X, then yeah, you're going to struggle at least for now. Um, and Microsoft have definitely had a very good last year. I mean, they've done really well. 
Apparently, we're seeing hardware revenue up 86%. And on top of that, there are now 18 million people who have Game Pass, which is up considerably. In fact, to give you an idea of just how much more that is, it's actually gone up 3 million people in just the last three months, which is kind of bonkers. In fact, there are 100 million people now utilizing Xbox Live every single month. The one good thing I'll say is that it seems that consoles are being drip-fed now. Uh, I've seen a couple of times that PlayStation 5s as well as Xbox Series X systems have actually gone on uh, sale for, let's say, Amazon, and they do seem to be lasting just a fraction longer. I've tweeted, for example, of PlayStation 5s that were available on a couple of different websites, and yeah, they were available for more than, like, two seconds. So I don't know, really, whether this is a case of just the demand is ever so slightly starting to dip. I personally don't think it's that. I think that websites are getting better now at kind of creating queue systems. Anecdotally, it does seem that uh, queues and websites are doing a little better at, well, just preventing tons of bots from jumping on. Although, of course, there are still tons of these systems available on eBay moments after they've gone live in a store. So, Maybe I'm wrong there. Do let me know, though. Have you managed to pick up a console since, well, let's say Christmas period? Are things settling down at all? And if so, what region are you in? Uh, it's kind of a little nuts, it seems, in different regions of the world. Like, different regions seem to be handling things a little differently. So I'm curious to see what uh, some of your experiences are like. With all of that said, thank you very much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.